Pro Advisor Coach Josh Greco back here with Dr. Bob. We're about to dive into some thrilling conversation per usual. Uh, today, Dr. Bob, I figured I would pose a question to kick us off here. I've been doing a bunch of this myself and have done it for a number of years. Uh, it's a topic that's uh, very interesting to me and I've read a lot of books about it. And it's, it's about thinking, thinking itself. Can somebody be good at thinking or better at thinking than other people? And or can you improve the way you think yourself? Is there, is there a way to get good at thinking? Okay, I, I love the question. <laughs> uh, yeah, the answer is yes. Um, and uh, our, our research um, has shown that we have this uh, potential molecule, a potential structure uh, within us. It's, it's innate, it's biological, okay? And um, it, it, it's uh, constructed of 13 principles that break down into three parts. And the three parts are what we call all encompassing. It, the three parts are planning or creating, organizing and functioning. So if you think about it, anything and everything one can think about will fit within those three somehow. So we've got a good start here, right? And um, then the next thing is that uh, that structure is, uh, is tantamount to your subconscious. It's within your subconscious. And it, it, it actually is the structure of the subconscious. So you have those 13 principles and they relate to your, your thinking, uh, how we think. We all have those 13. We all think the same way. We do, it, it, it's, uh, it's how we think, not what we think. Mm -hmm. What we think is the conscious, subjective mind. Okay? Uh, so, so you have an absolute structure on one side, uh, which is uh, objective uh, and non-referential. And then you have your, your common everyday mind which is very much subjective. I mean, it can be objective, but it's, for the most part, it's subjective. And that's the way we think every day, okay? Mm -hmm. So what, what I've discovered over the years uh, is that when a decision comes up or an issue comes up or a dispute comes up, Whenever a question or a specific issue comes to my comes to my forefront, what I do is I look to the thirteen principles to see where that fits. Right. What does that do? Well, it does a number of things. The first thing it does is it puts the entire situation in a very clear, objective perspective. Okay. Then I have to make a decision. Do I want to follow that course or do I want to be like the other guy and just you know, get into it on a very subjective uh, basis, prejudicial basis, okay? Um, and I've learned to discipline myself to stay on, on the, the uh, objective mind, right? So that, and, and one of the other, aside from clarity, the other thing it does is it uh, enables me, it, it clears my mind so that I can do a lot more. It's not, you know, I'm not uh, thinking uh, about different issues concerning that, that, specific, that specific aspect. Sure. So I can, I can come to a conclusion very quickly I don't have to be um, uh, uh, extended out, lose time. 
And I also can then address other factors. And that's how that's how I've been able, like for instance, in my in my business life, that's how I've been able to do so much. I mean, Chris, I started with three hundred and twenty one dollars, and uh, you know, and I built this thing into a multi million dollar empire. And uh, you know, I, I I didn't do it um, for any other reason. Well, there there were, but the most important was I kept a clear mind, and um, I was certain about my decisions. I was very clear about them, mm-hmm. and that that's that's what this does, and that's how um, that's how I try and teach people who want to think. Can can I ask just a couple of clarifying questions here? Sure. So I want to start with the last thing that you said. So you, you you've been able to. Um, uh, what would you call it? Get into the mode or tap into the potential to be able to do this? Is that what you're saying? You, you were able to find a new state that made you really efficient or really productive? Is that is that how you would put yes. it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And can you can you describe that at all? Like, how did it feel? How did you know you were in a different state? Like, what what was that structure? It's a structure. It's a structure. Okay. Chris. The discovery uh, that we call a holy grail or the potential molecule. It's one and the same, actually. Uh, is that uh, uh, was discovered uh, by a colleague of mine, former colleague who was passed on, uh, who was a world-class geneticist, Dr. Uh, Daryl Langham. And he had discovered the way in which a cell develops is a very definite structure. Mm. And it has 13 parts to it. Okay, uh, which break down into three segments, like I told you. Okay, and I want to I want to get deeper into that in a second. I just want another clarifying question. When you say you start off with our research, who's who's our who's the our in our research? Um, many people that have been in, involved, uh, mostly him and I, uh, okay. but many people like, like for instance, I have a uh, I have a geneticist friend of mine now that works with me, but she she's not. Hold on, Chris. But um, what the hell did I do here? I'm still here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hold on, Chris. I got to get back. What the heck? I lost the picture, Chris. Wait a minute. And, uh, there we are. Okay. Now, she, she uh, uh, you know, I, re- I rely on her. I have a... Uh, at this point in time, I have a uh, neuroscientist. Uh, I had a, uh, a Harvard social scientist. Um, over the years, I, I had a, a, two different uh, psychologists. One was pretty, pretty, pretty well known. Um, had a best-selling author. He just died a couple of months ago. So I've had a number of different people over the years working with me on different aspects of, of this research, Chris. Okay. Because, because it covers everything. Yeah. Well, and so when you say those 13 parts, how is that defined? Like, it, are you looking under a microscope and like categorize, like where, where does the 13 come from? Well, um, the, there's, a, the first segment is the planning. And there are three parts to that. Okay, okay. So that is the breakdown of, of a molecule. Right. The okay. organization, there are six parts. And then the, the functional or aspects of four parts. And the way Got it, it works is, uh, I think we had discussed this last, last week about the pulse, the wave, and the spiral. Oh, the that's pulse. where that comes from. Yeah, the pulse is the planning, right? You throw yeah. the rock in the water. The organizational are the waves, you know, it's starting to take form. And then uh, eventually the functional is the spiral where it comes down to reality. Oh, that's okay. so wild. I want to ask so many questions, but we're going to we'll come back to all that. Okay, so keep sure, going. Sure, sure. Um, okay, so so w- w- there was another question you had for um, me. So I was kind of working backwards from... Um, the state that you tapped into, like you, you're achieving this potential, you got to that. But I want to understand the, the structure and the framework of, of defining like our research. So you mentioned who you're working with, 
and then also like how how you came about identifying these 13 yeah. uh, layers under so, these three categories so so it's it's an actual structure chris a process okay josh by the way not chris josh josh i'm sorry <laughs> uh, it, it it's an it's an actual process and uh, it, it's something that we do automatically, by the way. I mean, the conversation we're having now, we're, we're going through this every second. We're implementing those, those 13. Oh, okay. It, it, it's the way in which we're doing it. Yeah. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm recognizing things that uh, I ordinarily, uh, if, I, if I didn't have the, the knowledge and experience, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Okay. So, so um, the the all I all that you need to do is to take what we try to do is take those thirteen principles and have a discussion with people and mark down on the whiteboard um, where their comments, where their thinking is going. Is is it on the thirteen principles? Is it is it the objective? Or is it the, the common mind, the sub, subject, what I call the subjective mind? Okay. okay, and that part is outside of those 13 principles. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. That it's not that it's outside of it. It's that it, it's a um, misnomer. Uh, people, people don't think right. I, we uh, and I'm talking about universally. People don't think right. There's very few people in this world that I've met that um, are using those principles, even though they don't understand them. But they're very clear-minded, and they they have uh, a sense of where to go with the, with their thinking. Right. I, I see. Like I, 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 I get different insights into that myself. I feel like pro I probably get there with different different points in time, but that's what I'm interested in. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but I, I think that would be extremely useful to talk through because when you say you did that in your business with starting from 300 something odd dollars to building this, your empire. Uh, yeah, but maybe walk us through how you how you tapped into that potential. Like, what, is, what does it look like? How, how would we know that you did that? Yeah. Uh one of the uh, one of the ways uh, that I, I could make it point clear is, uh, you know, we've talked about the restrictors, fear, ego, ignorance, and self-deception. Um, early on in, in, in my career, I, I had opportunities to make certain uh, investments. Now, uh, a lot of times I, I didn't do it. And as, as, I, as I grew with these principles, I discovered how I was implementing the restrictions. Number one, I, I, I didn't have enough knowledge about the investment, the whole process. But number two, I was fearful. Number one being ignorance, right? That was... That yeah. Was, okay. Right. Right. So when I started to approach investments by virtue of that understanding of my character, things started to change. Uh -huh. Okay. You found ways. You found ways to eliminate these things. So to eliminate ignorance, you went and learned what you had to learn, and then the first step to eliminating fear, right, is becoming aware that that it is fear, and then finding out what you're fearful of, right? Yes. Okay. Right. Right. And that was a, a major breakthrough. And I'll, 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 give you, I'll, I'll give you an example of uh, how, how that worked. Back in the early 80s, uh, I was uh, doing some uh, adjunct uh, work at uh, Seton College. And um, uh, we had a, a course on real estate investing that I taught. And I had about 16 people in the class. And, and I, I presented it very comprehensively, right? So after the classes were finished, I think we had about eight, eight or nine classes, um, I contacted the people and I said, well, how are you doing? You know, how's your investments coming? 
nobody, nobody was investing. And I discovered that the reason they were investing for the most part was, was they were fearful. Right? Okay. And fearful of, of, of losing money, of, of not knowing what to do. What, what were they fearful of? Yes, fearful. yeah, okay. all, all, all of that stuff. Losing money, uh, not knowing what to do, uh, although they had the courses to teach them what to do, uh, but mostly mostly it was, was a fear, uh, a lack of self-confidence, okay? Um, I fast forward about 12 years, and all of a sudden, all these real estate gurus I don't know, maybe it was more, it was maybe 15, 20 years. All these real estate gurus started to show up on the television. You know, you take my course and I'm going to show you how to be a millionaire and when I want to, which is exactly what I was doing 12, 15 years earlier, right? Wait, you were taking courses or you were putting commercials on, on the TV? No, no, this was other people that were, were bringing, I, I was teaching the courses. Oh, you're now, teaching the courses. Okay, now, they're coming, now they're coming on television or radio, yeah, yeah. and they're the real estate experts, and they're going to teach people. Okay. So uh, the more people that started to do that, the more it became common knowledge and common stream. It became more acceptable to people. Yeah. Mm. Okay. People started to invest. They had the opportunity to do it 10, 15, 20 years earlier, but they, did, they didn't do it because to them, it was so foreign. So the foreignness generated the fear and kept them out of the market. Okay. And even today, I see people every week, I see people who should make uh, investments. No reason why they shouldn't, but they don't because of fear. And you mean in terms of real estate or just in general investments? Anyway, yeah, in general, general investments, general investments. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, have a, I have a very good knack at, uh, at the, the stock market as well. Uh, really? So, oh yeah, yeah, I, 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 I've, I've had, I've had, there have been people who uh, would tell you that, um, oh yeah, Dr. Bob was professing this particular stock and um, I, I, I you know, respect his uh, opinion. I bought it and I made $50,000. I made $80,000. I made $20,000. Yeah. And I've done that. I've done that over the year. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do a show tomorrow and I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a suggestion on Ooh, can can you give us any uh, any any hints or you gonna leave I'll us? Send, I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so so um, so the the whole thing is that uh, directing your awareness mm -hmm. towards a focus. You also have to direct it towards your belief system because your belief system is going to uh, color what you're focusing on, all right? And if you are fearful, you, you, you're going to have a hard struggle getting through that, and perhaps you won't get through it, and you, you won't commit. You gotta, you gotta be open to it. That's, that's step number one, being open to it. Right. Okay. Right. So, so, it, so in that respect, uh, one of the beautiful things about the, the uh, potential theory uh, is that it, it readily teaches you about your own thinking, how you, th what you think. Mm -hmm. Not how you, we know how you think now, what, what you're thinking, okay? Yeah. So that you can see ahead of time what's coming and deal with it. It's almost like a, a, a predictor model. And in some ways, it is a predictor model. Yeah, it's almost, I mean, we talked about Edward Casey a few weeks ago about his ability to just tap into this knowledge. Like, I don't know, that's the 
uh, what I would relate to his version of tapping into the potential, the stuff that he was able to come up with. There's no other explanation for it other than to be a part of, you know, what people might call, I don't know, source energy or just be in tune with uh, the information that's available that we, our belief systems maybe prevent us from seeing. Maybe that's a way to, to, to see yeah. it. Well, it, he, he activated his potential molecule structure. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm sure he had no idea he was doing that or how he was doing no. that. <laughs> no, people don't. No, no. Yeah. I talk to scientists and they, they'll say, well, I don't know if it's a potential molecule. I don't even know if it's a molecule, but, you know, the tests, the neurological tests are showing that it's, it's valid. You know, I mean, we, we, we've done three different neurological tests. We did We've done uh, e -E EEG, ECGs, and uh, the Pythagorean frequencies. And all three of them show that the, um, the, the theory is 97% valid. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a tremendous number, hmm. you know, for, for, for a research, research study, okay? Uh, and we've had social scientists that that have um, confirmed it. So so it, it's a matter of um, uh, explaining it to people, and then explaining how those principles work, because they do interact with each other, and formulate systems. Okay, and then do an analysis of their strengths and their weaknesses. And then finally, structure a program per issue as to how to how to how to think how to how to how to follow a path. You know, then then it's simple. It's A B C D E. You know, right right down the line. And the more confidence that people have in the process and understand it. Um, the better it works. And it, it will eventually uh, take over the world because it's innate. It's something that we all have within us, but we, we block us, right? My 14 my year old grandson says, we're the fallen angels. And this is the way back, <laughs> you know? And 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 you know that that that's a very good interpretation. Because, I like that. Yeah, because we're we're screwing ourselves up left and right. So I, I want to get back to this, um, if I if I could. Yeah, sure. So we we're talking about uh, the process to tapping into this potential. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the perception I have right now, is that you don't just uh, understand it and then boom, you're tapping into your true potential. It's, it's maybe a gradual, and that's what you're talking about. You're eliminating the fear, eliminating the ignorance by like, let's get back to that conversation. You're starting to study investments and, and understand it. And then what else? Like how else were you getting to that point of potential? Well, first off, Chris, it's, it's um, Josh, it's an ongoing, it's, it's an ongoing process. There are still times when uh, fear crops up in the decisions that I'm making. And I may have made it, you know, dozens of times in my life. All right. Sure. So, uh, and, and that, that's what makes everything so great, you know? Yeah. And well, makes it's, it's like uh, our conversation before about like w when you produce the internet, then potential increases, like you, you never can get to the point of like achieving the potential. There's just more and more potential beyond that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Got it. Yes. Yes. So, so, so the whole idea is you, 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 you learn the 13 principles and you keep them in mind. You know, um, I, I have, um, a long time ago, I made up these cubes, these, these little cubes here, you see, yeah. 13, 13 of them plus potential. And I used to keep them, if nothing else, just to remind me, right? And I would roll them out, look at them, and analyze what's going on by whatever came up. And I love people, that. And people, people would say, 
oh, you're into chicken bones these days, you know? <laughs> uh, and and, and uh, the answer is uh, no, because when you have the 13 principles, sooner or later, you're going to come up with the answer. It's like having a wheel with 13 spokes, right? And you pick one, and sooner or later, you're going to hit it. It's going to come out. So you see the you're principle. Doing, you're doing those things to keep them top of mind because eventually when you come across something, it'll hit because you've been looking at them. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yes. Yes. And and what you do is, as, as I said, that there are process. The 13 is a process. Okay. Even though the individual principles um, are, are, are self-descriptive and each of them has a purpose, it's all together, it's a, pro it's a process. So what you need to do is uh, you, wanna, you wanna do something, well, then you start going down the list, okay? Uh, I, I have one right now that I'm working on a professional sports team. And uh, I, I'm having a hell of a time trying to make these guys understand uh, how this thing uh, works. I think I've convinced them that it will help them, but they're having a hell of a time convincing them how it works, and that's bothering them. Mm. And uh, what's blocking them is, you know, they're so goddamn. They, they think that they're so smart and that they're thinking. And I really can't come out and say, no, your, your thinking sucks. Well, that was the first step, remember, the openness. Like you have to come with some sort of humility that there's a better way to approach something. Exactly. You have to yeah. be open. And you have to, you have to put, put aside all your, all your concepts. Dr. Bob, get me on the phone with these guys. I'll, I'll get a breakthrough for them. I'll, I'll break through too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just might do that yeah. <laughs> but but yeah it, it's uh that's true because it, you need to put away any preconceived notions of a thing before you start addressing it right it's the it's the only way to be to be truthful and to be absolutely clear uh -huh. mm -hmm. and yeah. there have been times there have been times in my research a lot of times when i said like like the the first time when I was doing I was doing this research, and the answer came down to genetics. I said genetics. What the hell? I don't know anything about genetics, you know. And I walked away from it. And I was doing peripheral work, and then I I met this this geneticist. The guy called me out of the blue, so. Um, uh, I, again, you know the whole the whole idea is that when you follow the, those thirteen, I mean, you could structure a company, you can structure an investment uh, um, procedure, a personal process, you know, any any anything that you want using those thirteen, and and look and see how uh, uh, it, it's like a universal lang language. You you what you do is. You take your 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 concepts. You take the different aspects, and you fill in these thirteen. Where does this belong? Where does that belong? With it? And then you get the whole picture. And and a lot of times you don't even need to to do the whole thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. You, you get to two or three, and all of a sudden, one of them hits. You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one that I like is, well, the two that I like really are, are uh, organizational is the feedback. We, we discussed that before. And uh, the uh, uh, synergy, putting, putting everything together. You know, um, you know I, 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 I love that. That's... Can, you, can we list the full 13? I, I would love to know what goes under each category. Okay, uh, in, the, um, in the planning, there are three, uh, and, and we call it the a ABC. It's uh, awareness, belief, 
and character or characterization. Okay. Okay. And there's there's a little formula there that works all the time. Is a plus b always equals c? Pythagoras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a squared, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Right. That was it. Yeah. 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 And that that yeah that's where that's where we got it from from Pythagoras. Uh huh. The, the functional are four. Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual or intuitive. And when you think about it, there's only four ways in which uh, you can function. That's it. No other way. Nobody's ever thought of any other way. <laughs> the organizational are a little bit more, um, a little more involved. There's six of them, but there's um, uh, well, the first two are law and order. Laws, principles, okay? Order or process. Uh, the other two are um, parts and whole or uh, integration and segregation. You can do it that way, separate and whole. And then the last two are judgment or measurement and feedback. What were the last two again? Judgment and feedback. And by okay. judgment, I mean measurement, you know. Sure. Okay. And so now when you say you can figure you, you get a couple to hit. What do you what do you mean by that? Like what, what does that mean? Well, uh, you, you you may have an issue uh, that you're trying to you're trying to solve something, and uh, so uh, you look at um, um, uh, you look at the a plus b equals c. Okay, you know that that if uh, if there's a decision. You need two of those three in which to come to an answer. Mm. Okay. Uh, and you could, so, so you may look, well, this particular issue, let me look at my beliefs. Bingo. Right. Or let me look at what I'm focusing on. And by the way, in doing these um, interactions with students and clients and whatnot, the way people interpret things, such as focus, they'll tell you, I'll say, what's your focus? And they'll you know, give me an answer, you know, making money. Okay, good, let's go. Start going through the exercise and all of a sudden, their focus starts to change. Not really money. It could be like in one particular case I'm thinking about security. And as it turned out, the problem that this guy was having is he was so damn insecure his whole life. Yeah, I mean, he was only 30 years old, but his whole life was about gaining security. And the way in which he interpreted uh, the acquisition development of security was making a lot of money mm -hmm. and he wasn't doing that well he was doing well don't get me wrong but but uh he wasn't doing that well because he had too many restrictors in his way it was too too cloudy yeah the process was not open and he was he was restricting himself so um, you, the way awareness is, is what I call the number one intelligence. The greater your awareness, the more open your awareness, the more intelligent I find people are. Mm, I like that. And the, and the more intelligent, the more capable they are, mm. you know? And I, I noticed I have a lot of very successful friends, a lot of very wealthy friends, 
uh, very prominent people. And they tend to have tremendous awareness. Not, not in everything necessarily, but they, they, they're very aware of their, uh, their environment. And that resonates with me, if I, if I may just provide a definition of what like your feedback on it. It's, it's the ability to step outside of your own perspective and, and see things from a different way to be able to pick up on other opportunities that are always around us. Um, you know, and a person who might consider themselves unlucky, maybe just unaware. Yep. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there are um, th there are so many components to the way people interpret uh, their um, their situations. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to gloss right over that statement. I think that's so. Can you say that again? There are so many components. Yeah. That people interpret there's that that's probably the reason we have a tough time communicating with each other is because don't you see it my way no you see it your way you know we're shouting at each other that's so true there's so many components that influence the way that we see things okay i didn't mean to interrupt yeah 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 and when when i when i put them through the exercise uh which is a lot of fun by the way i, I do it with students you know i get get on the blackboard and you know, and every time they come up with something, you know, I, I show them where, which column to put it in. You know, they begin to see a whole different perspective of what's going on. Yeah, you know? I, I had I had when I was teaching a, a course in HR at um, at Mercy College a couple of years back, and I had this one fella, uh, he was about thirty. And he was the manager of a um, uh, of of a cleaning company, small small company, ten people. And he was telling me, um, I said, what, "What's anybody? You yeah, got a problem? You got an issue?" And the guy says, yeah, yeah. "I've got a guy that works for me. He says I want to kill. He says he's getting me to the point where I I'm going to quit, and there's going to be about four or five others that are going to quit as well." So I said, okay, what's the problem? And we're talking, and it turns out that this guy was friends with the owner. The guy that's giving them a problem. So he wasn't accepting management. He was going right, right to the owner, right? Yeah. And he was screwing things up. So I, we went, we went through this whole exercise, spent about a half hour with him, and I I built this process and I said, okay, this is what I want you to do. I said, tomorrow when you go to work, I want you to write, write this down. I want you to go to your boss and I want you to tell him all of these things of what's going on. Let's see what happens. Comes back the next week. I said, did you have any results? He says, oh God. He says, the tiger was loose. I said, uh oh, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> he says, he went nuts. He went nuts. He took the guy and he said, from now on, you're gonna work under me. You 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 do what I tell you to do and you stay out away from anybody else. And then he told me you have to tell me what you want him to do. So the boss, what was happening was this guy was using the boss to um, conduct his own affairs within the mm -hmm. business and he was screwing things up. So what did we do? We reversed the polarity, which, you know, I knew that that was gonna happen. I didn't think it was gonna happen as quickly and as well as it did. So the guy said, I can't believe it. He said, this is terrific, you know, that this is sensational. And and I had a couple of other kids in that class um, that, uh, uh, they were, yeah, they were, uh, it was a life skills class and who uh, had the same issue. 
and we resolved it by going through that their their thinking and their exercises and applying the the uh, the, the potential theory to it, right? Mm -hmm. And they got it. They understood exactly what I was saying. They may still need practice as to applying it themselves, but they saw that it worked. They saw pretty, it worked. pretty immediately too. That's a pretty uh, pretty quick feedback right there. The next day, <laughs> yeah. The next day, one of the other kids, uh, uh, he was a young guy. He was like twenty four, and uh, there was an older guy. He, he was a he was a like an assistant manager. There was an older guy who totally disrespected him because he, the guy was younger. And he, you know, the guy was like 34, 35, and he's taking orders from a you know twenty four year old kid. So you know, we set up a pattern for him, and he said after two or three days, he said about three days, he says the guy was crying to me. The guy yeah. had issues. You know, mm -hmm. deep, deep issues that he was harboring. And they became, they became buddies. So, I, I mean, I can't emphasize enough how people screw themselves up so badly. And yet, they blame other people. They distance themselves. They refuse to help themselves. And that, that to me is, is a shame. Oh, we talked about that too. I mean, this stuff will only resonate with people who are, are wanting more. And that, that to me, I'm, I'm reading Awareness by Anthony DeMello right now, talking about people waking up. Like it's, it's just very apropos just to this whole line of uh, videos that we're doing, Dr. Bob, that there is a certain segment of the population, I think it's increasing by the day, that is waking up. And like noticing these things and like, oh my gosh, there's there's so much more to the the systems that we've been integrated in and uh, uh, just without even knowing we're, we're a part of, there's so much more out there and it's exciting and it's it's new and it's fun. And the only way to go higher and more is to eliminate or to strip away these systems that we've been indoctrinated into to open our eyes to what what is possible out there. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. Uh, things are changing, uh, and, and I, I see it. I see it coming. Uh, I, I think we're going to go through some some significant hardships yet. But I think when we come out of this, we're going to be better than we've we've ever been. I I love that viewpoint because it's it's like the whole story of good and evil, right? It's like one needs the other, but they're 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 you can't separate them. Um, and unfortunately, that's, you know, we have to go through some of this bad to, to re be reflected, right? To, people are waking up because of the bad right now. That's, that's what's happening. Consider the use of adversity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's the key. I, that's saw, the I saw somewhere, I think it was maybe Viktor Frankl said, uh, you cannot shine your light without being burned. Yeah. something like that like you you need to go through some stuff to like to to get to the depths of what you're capable of you got to be in a spot to where you you so desire to to do that and that can come from from pain yeah and 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 uh, the more <clears throat> the more you take on personally uh, the stronger you become the more confident you become and the more rewarding it is yeah and oh. you go home, you know, you, you, you really do. You come home because uh, your, your mind has become the self. Mm, yeah. Right. You become so um, self-encompassed. The world is yours at that point. And it, and it truly is. Mm -hmm. true. It works. It's, it's returning to your natural state of, of how you got into the, the the first formative years of your life, you're, you know, all this weight is put upon you before you even know what's going on. Talk about awareness. You're not aware of anything as a child, all the stuff that's coming into your life that you're being exposed to that is shaping the way that you see the world. Yes. 
So yeah. at a certain point, that awareness kicks in and it's like, you got to strip away those things. And my gosh, I've been through some of those things where this, this weight is just lifted. It's like, oh, that's why I think those thoughts. And that's why I feel the way I, I do about these things or in this situation it just becomes so clear. And you just want, you want to keep doing it. You want to keep, what else can I strip away? What else, what else am I missing? Because I believe, I think I believe what I believe. Yeah. Okay. It's another, it, uh, another a good place to put a bookmark. I want to get into the, the uh, wave and pulse and spiral, like a little bit deeper. That, that intrigues me a lot that uh, I wanted to ask you this, if, if we could, just one more question before we depart today. Um, that 13, any significance with that? I know that's like a Fibonacci number. Does that have any, like why 13? Yeah, everything, everything. Okay. You know, there's uh, the uh, uh, 13, uh, you know, the 12 apostles, you know, uh, and the Christ, you know, significance. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, 13 colonies, you know, I mean, there, there are so many, um, so many references to it yeah it's a it's a number of nature yes yeah you know right. and uh um it, it's um to me it's it's magical you know, mm -hmm. just you know, you know and it ties in with with uh, so many so much other stuff which we can cover in the future i mean it's just a uh, beautiful just just beautiful with that I enjoyed today's conversation, Dr. Bob. Thank you so much. Always, always. Okay. Absolutely. I'll talk we'll to you soon. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.